I always do it too early. That's okay. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. You have to like wait until right at seven? Yeah, I usually write at seven, I start the intro. Okay. Grab your wine. It's time for Rosé All Day and Julie's a Mess, where we talk about current events and living in an intersex life. And now, here's Julie. Everybody, welcome to Rose All Day. Julie's a mess. It is Tuesday, October 26th. For me and for people in my community, that's a huge day. It is Intersex Awareness Day, which for many of you, you know that's why I got into this platform. You know why I got into this podcast was to raise awareness about what it's like to be intersex and live a very intersex life. You can find out more information on justjulie.com. People have been asking all day, what's a way that we can support you on days like this? Wear purple and gold, right? Yellow and gold. Wear, uh, make sure that you're sharing our stories, that you are being open to what we tell you. But anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit later. We're going to get right into the show. I'm super excited about our guest tonight. She was a reschedule. We are going to have her as part of our Disney season or series back in July but she's got a busy schedule and I've got a busy schedule with moving. So first let's talk about my drink. I'm not drinking rosé tonight. I know, I know it's called rosé all day, but in my defense, I've been trying to get settled for the last couple of weeks. I'm here in Savannah. I haven't had money for wine. I've been applying for jobs. And after the day I've had, it's a rum and Coke kind of day. So I'm drinking rum and Coke this evening. It's rum and Coke all day this evening. Julie's still a mess, and we're going to get into all of that, too. But let's introduce my guest tonight. She is super, super talented, one of my favorite people in the world to watch and engage with. We have a past, and uh, I'm here for it. It is Charity Gill, everybody. Hi, Charity. Hello. Welcome. Charity is joining us all the way from Orlando although she has traveled the world probably more times than I've traveled the continental United States. And we're going to talk about all of that. Charity, let the people know that are listening or watching at home. How do we know each other? Um, we met at Coconut Willie's, I believe, right? Is that right? Coconut yeah. Willie's in Orlando, like on, uh, is that, was it? No, not on International Drive, that main road there. Um, yeah, I don't even think it's 530, it was at 535 and it's the cross section of like 535 and, oh, no, I can't remember either. I haven't been 92, 192. That sounds right. That sounds right. Uh, I don't think it's there anymore, which is no, sad. but karaoke at coconut willies. And then of course we just really got to know each other when we went to Laughlin, Nevada, <laughs> that the whole thing. <laughs> We won a contest, everybody. Whiskey. We won a karaoke contest. She was like the best female singer, and somehow I got best male singer, and then they <laughs> shipped us off to some big karaoke convention. 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 Contest. I don't, yeah. Contest. Was... You, I mean, you and I walked in, and we were like, Ugh. It was so. I true. remember you looked at me and you're like, "Were we supposed to bring costumes?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were like, "Remember, was there was a guy that did Jekyll and Hyde, and he was like, like, I think he probably won. Like, that's what we were supposed to do. We were unprepared. <laughs> yeah, sorely yeah. unprepared. And Halloween's this week, and I always, every time I see a spirit Halloween store or well, anything that has to do with dress up that's Halloween related. There was a store in Laughlin called Halloween World and you would, that became like our tagline all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Halloween World. <laughs> uh, at the time you were working at Universal. No, or I, was Disney. At, I was at Disney. Yeah. I was you were at Disney. Disney. 
Yeah. And uh, we did we did laugh. This will be a throwback to the series in July. But I remember we we joked because you had auditioned to be uh, Belle in the Beauty and the Beast stage show. Mm -hmm. And I think we were talking about how at one of your auditions, they were like, we just can't see you as Belle. And you're like, but I do. <laughs> I do her already in the park. Really what I do. Yeah. 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 I auditioned every month when I was with them to have a singing gig. And they would never they would put me on tape and, you know, whatever. But they never gave me a job. And as, the as Disney as audition ring is. It was always interesting. I found it very interesting when I was there. I felt so intimidated in that huge room with everybody's freaking out and they're just warming up and showing off. And it's just, I hate that type of pressure. I hate it. But so you got great news while we were in Laughlin. You I got did. great news while we were in Laughlin. So we were in the elevator and we were in the corner of the elevator, because I think we were a little frightened by all the people at this convention and how into karaoke they were. Yeah. Um, and she got a phone call because she had auditioned at Universal Studios in Orlando um, to sing. And she ended up getting contracted in Japan for their version of Wicked. And she got that call while we were in the elevator. I remember I was thrilled for her, a little jealous, but what could I do? I mean. <laughs> It was a show about witches, and clearly I didn't look like Galinda back then. So um, <laughs> you that could wasn't do it happening. now. I could do it now. Yeah. Uh, but you know, back then, and then that was kind of the beginning for you. Some big things happened, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. We're gonna lay off the pressure right now, though, and go into current events. Before we do that, I do want to say hi to everybody. Blair popped in and said. Uh, saying hi and have a great show. Cannot stay, but can watch it later. That's right. Everybody can watch our shows later on the Just Julie channel of YouTube. And Charles said, have a good evening, Blair. So it's good to see my friend Charlie in here as well. And everybody else is joining us. Uh, if you have any questions for us this evening, feel free to write them in the chat if you're watching live. And we will try and answer those as best as possible. Uh, okay, so current events. I just read that the Pfizer vaccination, which is the vaccination I chose to get, uh, you know, I kind of figured, Charity, that if they had helped men for many decades with erectile dysfunction by um, making um, that little blue pill, Viagra, they were a smart choice for getting rid of COVID. So that's why I said, come on, Pfizer, get in my body. Uh, now the FDA is saying that Pfizer can start giving the vaccine to children as young as five. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I got vaccines when I was that young too. So I would imagine it's the same sort, sort of thing. And I got Pfizer too. Um, I'm, I'm all about the vaccines. I, I'm not afraid. I'm like, let's go. Let's do this. Let's get back to normal. Everybody. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. And I think some people are are still on the fence about what's in the vaccine and what's it's going to do for the future. But I'm like, eh, at this point, let's just all go get vaccine. I don't know what was in the cheeseburger I had today, to be honest. So I, I'm cool with it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Where'd you get the cheeseburger from? Maybe uh, our guest can help you figure out what was inside it. Uh, maybe I don't want to know, honestly. <laughs> no, we went to Chili's. Oh, yeah. I had Chili's the other day. I miss it. Chili's is good. So good. Like, I put it off for a long time, but it's so good. Did you go to the one right there in Winter Garden? Mm-hmm. Yep, sure did. Oh, good. Yep, you got to get the um, pr pr margarita, Presidente margarita. Yes. <laughs> Salt on the rim? Yep. Okay. Yes, indeed. I know Charity is like, I'm wearing my Braves shirt. She said that earlier. I was talking to somebody else about it. The Braves are our home team here in Georgia, right? Everybody yeah. likes the Braves. And yeah. they're in the playoffs? No, they, they're out of the playoffs. They're in the World Series. Like, they they made it to the World Series. And uh, they've broken their 20-year curse. They have not seen the World Series since 1999. So it's, it's a big deal tonight. A big deal. Well, go Braves. We're cheering right. for you. Two Georgia girls. Um, I'm back in Georgia. She's from Georgia. 
and I'm very jealous that you're in Savannah. I didn't, I lived closer to the suburbs of Atlanta, but Savannah is like. Savannah's like, gorgeous. Savannah, Savannah is gorgeous. It's like mint julep to a territory, you know? Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Yeah. Like there are even parts that I've driven through that I don't remember or consider Savannah like recently, but you see one tree hanging over the street with some Spanish moss on it. And you think, Oh, I'm home. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, love I love it. It. It's beautiful. Love Savannah. There's something genteel about it. I feel like I should be walking out of my front door every day with like a big hat on and I should be passing Rhett Butler's house on the way down to get, you know, a yoga mat. Yeah, yeah a yoga mat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, the second story I want to share with you, I know that Gilly and the girl, which we're going to talk about more as well, that y'all are planning a cruise for your fans, which is we great. Are. And I think we're going to promote that a little bit later. And I want to know more about that. But Right now, the CDC today released guidelines. Uh, where's that story at? I just saw it. Um, let's see. The CDC said that they are going, okay, that's not what I want. <laughs> I hate when you pull it up on your phone and then your phone shuts off and you're like, grr, grr. basically the CDC said, okay, the CDC has allowed cruise ships to operate with conditions since October 2020 requiring masks on board and vaccinations or testing of passengers and crew, among other safety precautions. Though the agency planned to lift the order by November 1st, Monday's extension will become a voluntary measure for cruise operators on January 15th. The procedures put in place to resume passenger operations have successfully averted overwhelming onboard medical facilities and burdening shore, shore side, say that five times fast, hospital resources. However, CDC decided to temporarily extend the order due to the continued spread of the Delta variant. Mm. Where are your thoughts on that? Because I know that's the first time you're hearing about that. So, I don't think your cruise will be canceled. I just think that. Well, and our cruise is not actually till March, 2023. So we have a long time. So you've got a whole year in the mix, a whole year and a half in the mix before y'all yeah. do that. Yeah. Cause we didn't want to deal with that. We were, we're just hoping that it gets better. Like I don't imagine it's going to be back to normal ever really, but I, I just hope we get to a point where people don't have to necessarily wear a mask on board, you know. Um, but that's we'll got to be difficult singing and performing with a yeah. mask. Too. Well, we we've, we've had to do it when we we worked at SeaWorld for a short time during a festival, and they made us wear a mask while we sang. While we sang, it's not easy, but you do it to, to you got you got to make money, you know. <laughs> so you just absolutely. I have to wear. My, never mind. <laughs> Kidding, folks. We're kidding. I'm kidding. Jeez. So now we go into a segment um, that I love, uh, and we're doing great on time, called, first I want to um, put this at the bottom. Uh, we are going into a segment called Julie's a Mess. Now, followers and subscribers and people that have been watching my podcast since last year they always seem to like Julie the Mess because you know what? It's just proof in the pudding that I indeed am messy. <laughs> That's okay. I, I'm messy too. Messy. So um, let's see. I didn't really, I told you earlier, usually I have these stories all laid up like, oh, I'm going to use this one, but my brain has been on overload lately. Okay. So I think I'm going to ask you for a suggestion and I'm going to try and come up with a story from that suggestion. I mean, so I didn't really get to to really hang out with you much. Um, so maybe if you have a story from like back in the Coconut Willie days, did you have any, you know, fun little times at Willie's? <laughs> I didn't. No? But in the Willies, I mean, I did have fun there. I don't want to say that because, you know, we all love Trish and stuff like that. But I don't have anything that I remember as being like 
fun. You know, just kind of showed, yeah, there was nothing scandalous. Like, no. I mean, other than that night that I almost didn't win the competition and didn't get to go to offline. I mean, they were gunning for me not to go. Really? <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, this may, maybe this won't be a story tonight, but like, yeah, I remember I sang and you sang that night. And um, I remember hearing later that like, I was not the front runner and they didn't want me to go. And they, it, they were trying to get some guy from Disney to go. And, um, and then I sang lady in red and people were like, Nope, Nope. He's got to go. Like he's, he's it. And then, um, I just, so I remember hearing that, but nothing ever really like scandalous happened. That was, and Willie's was weird. Cause we got like people that like to sing would go in there. Yeah. And then people that loved being with Trish would go in there. And then yeah. like, but then you'd get like these weird, like kids that could go in there cause they were of age in Europe, but not of age in Kissimmee. And they would go in there and things would like, happen and and I like, dated one. <laughs> you dated one? Okay, so yes, because you know, uh, when I was friends with Bill, um I would work in the front the French pavilion at Epcot, right? And so there's all the French guys that are there working and they're all like you said, European. So they've been drinking, well, I mean, you're French, you've been drinking since you're probably 6. But right. um this guy named Laurent <laughs> Uh, he took an interest in me and he looked a lot older than he was, to be honest. And at the time I was like 26, maybe. And he was 20. So, I mean, he was almost, almost of age, but I had to, like, he came in and I remember buying and sneaking him drinks when he was there. So, Look. Do what you gotta do. You cougar. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. <laughs> I'm a cougar too. I, I mean, I'm not a cougar anymore. Mike's a little bit older than me, but <laughs> I know you're married. You're a married woman now. Yeah, it's it's a different life now. <laughs> you love it. I do. It's great. I mean, it's it's another chapter, but it's a, an amazing one. So, yeah. I'm so I met Mike tonight for the first time. I feel like I've known him for like 30 years, but it was nice to kind of talk to him and and actually have a little bit of a conversation. Y'all are super adorable together, even on TikTok. I, I mean, the super adorable where like y'all interact thinking and I'm sitting here like, eh, no, yeah. I'm just yeah. kidding. Y'all are super sweet and way talented. Um, okay, so um, this is fun. I mean, we didn't really do Julie's a mess, but we're gonna just go in. I have tons of questions for you because it's been a while. So let's just do that. Let's just roll into five questions and we'll just ask a lot of questions. So, okay. um, you know, pretty much you came back from Laughlin and within months you left for Japan. What was that like? In Japan or like the whole well, process? Well, the whole process. I mean, well, first of all, when I auditioned, I. Laurent, actually speaking of him, he's a big reason why I decided to officially audition because I was so afraid um, to do something like that because it would have been in Japan and, and I never had any desire to go to Asia, to be quite honest. Um, so I took the, I mean, when I took the job, I was dating that guy, Rob, remember? Yes. And we were pretty serious. And then all of a sudden I was like, well, the, this is, I mean, we have to end it. We eventually did. Um, but that was tough to do while I'm trying to go to Japan and then go to Japan and my life completely changed. Um, and I fell in love with the country, like 100% head over heels, still love it. I have two sisters living there right now because I influenced them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I spent seven years of my life there. Like it totally changed me. And I met my husband there. That's where I met Mike in Japan. So, I mean, I did everything from Wicked. I did Wicked for three years. Then I did a Sesame Street show. And then I did Universal Monsters. I was the Bride of Frankenstein. Yes. And then the last thing I did was kind of hard to explain, but it was like a show that companies could buy and and give to their you know employees or their customers or whatever. So I didn't work very much. And it was the best job because I might have worked 10 days a month, but I was getting paid the exact same. So that you was loved it. you loved I, 
I loved it. I mean, there was tough days and um, yeah, it, it, there were some tough years even. Or at one point I had pre-node, pre-nodes from singing Alphaba when I was sick and I should not have been. Um, so I had to leave and come back to Atlanta actually for a couple months and completely rest my voice. I went to a, um, a voice coach, a very famous voice coach in Atlanta um, named Jan, Jan Smith. She coached like Usher and Justin Bieber and stuff like that. And it was not cheap, but she helped me figure out, you know, like that it wasn't my technique. It was just, I didn't have good stamina for you know, what was needed as Alphaba. So I figured out how to get that and, and then it got better. I was living over in California at the time that you, I think that you would, I mean, I'd moved out to California and I was enthralled with, uh, at that time as Wicked gained popularity mm-hmm. and you would hear people and chat forums talking about their favorite alphabas on Broadway and their mm-hmm. favorite Glinda's on Broadway. Uh, every once in a while your name would pop up and I'd be like, wait a second, she's not on Broadway. And then I thought, how awesome for her to be a part of all of that. Like you literally got a huge fan base from doing that. And then you were popping up on YouTube and you're popping out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they, so famous. they they couldn't, um, you know, film the show there, of course, like they can on Broadway, but they didn't even have clips. Like anything that's online is all illegal, basically illegal video that people took in the audience. And, uh, some of it is not great. Not, I'm not a fan of the clips, but, um, but you know, it, it was cool. And Japanese fans are like a whole other thing. Oh my, I have stacks of photo books of them taking pictures of me, not in Wicked, some, some in Wicked, but mostly in like Sesame Street and the monster show and stuff. And I just have stacks of pictures of me. And like, I don't look at myself. I'm not framing these. No, like it's, I mean, it was so sweet. And they would give me gifts. And one of them even made like a stuffed animal for me. (laughs) Like that looked like me. It was, it was bizarre. Um, Yeah, that was, that was crazy. Well, tell us now you've kind of, you've, you floated back down from the theme park universal space and you met a great guy over there Mm -hmm. and uh, you got married and you're settling in the Orlando area. And now y'all have this great duo. You're still singing and he sings as well. And y'all have this really amazing duo called Gilly and the girls. So tell us about how that kind of started. So Gillian, uh, so me and Mike, we met in like 2011. Uh, we He came over to do a just a quick little Christmas contract. He was like a toy soldier. He had to scare the guests in Japan. And um, I was in the Sesame Street show. It was the year I turned 30. So I was like a mess turning 30, <laughs> thinking, oh, I'm old now. And I'm going to go back. Been there. I'm going to go slap her and shake her. And yeah. Um but that's the year I met him and it was within like a week or two. It was like, Oh, okay. This is it. This is it. This is what, it, that's what everybody was talking about. And so it was really quick. Um, but we decided we would wait and do it, you know, the right way uh, and not try to jump right into a relationship. So he had to leave before I was done with my contract. So we did a little bit of a long distance relationship for about four or five months and then I moved to Orlando to be with him. And I promised myself I was not moving back to Orlando. <laughs> so, yeah. But, and here I am still living in Orlando. You are. I mean, technically, you're not, you're on the outskirts of Orlando, but I get oh. you. I get you. Yeah. People were like, you moving back to Florida? And I was like, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm not. That was, nice. that was what I would have said. And then I met him and, and it changed everything. So then we um, we hung around for like a year and a half and we got engaged, we got married and then Universal opened. And all of this time, Mike is not singing. Like he plays guitar and sings as a hobby. Like he told me, I don't do that in front of people. So don't ask me to. And I was like, okay. What was your line earlier? He doesn't dance in front of grandma. He's yeah, he doesn't, you know. he doesn't dance for grandma. Like even now, if you ask him to sing like on the spot, oh, you sing, let me hear it. He's like, uh, mm, he won't do it. Um, but anyway, he, so um, they opened Harry Potter, like Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal in Japan. And so that meant there were 
actor options for him. Like he could audition to be an actor. So he auditioned to do that. I auditioned to sing again there and we got the contract. We went back and we lived there together for three years, still not working together on Gilly and the Girl. But somebody suggested that we, you know, maybe sing at this um, little pizza bar, this Canadian pizza bar in Japan. Uh, some friends of ours worked there and they were having their big anniversary for the store and they asked us to sing. And so I was like, do you want to try it? And he, so we came up with like, you know, 12, 10 or 12 songs and we performed that night for the first time and it went really well. And we kind of got, we were on a high with it and we just decided to explore it. And then a friend of ours was like, you know, you can jump on cruise ships and do that for a job and see the world. And that, I think that really motivated Mike to kind of look at it differently. And then he started getting serious with me. Um, on, on making Gilly and the Girl a thing. Somebody suggested that name because we were trying to come up with a cutesy cruise shipy type name. And that one seemed the cutest. And I don't know, it just stuck. We still have people come up all the time. They eat the, our number one question is which one's Gilly, which one's the girl? You know, I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> and they all, they all, they all think they're the first one to say it too. Right. So, you're like, you're so funny. Ha ha ha. I'm yeah. Gilly. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, well, my last name is Gil, so technically I could be Gilly too. Um, but anyway, uh, and the other thing that people always say is, I, why don't you have a name? Like they get upset that I'm the girl, but it's just like, come on. You're like, like come on, class. Yeah. Calm down. It's, it's a joke. You're married. It's both our names. Yeah, it's a joke. You're here for the music, so shut up and listen. Exactly. Basically. But, I'll say it for you. Oh, y'all shut up and just listen. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so we start, we auditioned to do the cruise ship stuff and we got a contract with Celebrity Cruise Ships um, summer of 2017. And we did that for three years right up until COVID. And that's, yeah, that, that was, was COVID. Yeah, good old coves. That's when you really got to see if you liked him. Because you liked <laughs> him all the time. Oh, no, actually... Not that's actually not true for us on the ship was worse than when COVID hit because we were living in a closet in bunk beds working together seven days a week. Actually, that was our test. Wow. <laughs> so COVID, we were at least at his uncle's house where I could go to one side of the house and he could go to the other, you know, like if we needed a break or something. But on the cruise ship, y'all were in the thick of it. Yeah, you are stuck. Ugh. Yeah. But I'm probably afraid to leave and go mingle with other people at that point in time. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and we were living in Ocala, which I don't know if you know much about Ocala. I do. <laughs> do you? Do you know? Uh, it's like horse country, you know, emphasis on the country. Uh, so there's not a whole lot to do there. And we were in the, it's beautiful, but it's, you know, you, there's not a whole lot to do. There's not a whole lot to do in Ocala. No. Mm -mm. So so interesting question. You were talking about being over in Japan and you love it. I do remember there was a video that y'all put this was before TikTok, y'all. I feel like this would have been a great TikTok had it been happening now. But you and a couple of your friends got on this kick of trying certain dessert bars, frozen oh. dessert bars. Oh my God, yeah. While YouTubing it. And I specifically remember one night Y'all had a frozen popsicle that was supposed to taste like SpaghettiOs or spaghetti. Spaghetti bolognese. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think that was called. So your question is, out of all the frozen dessert treats you tried, what was your favorite? Out of the weird ones? Yeah, sure. I don't know which ones you all tried. I remember seeing that one. That one was not good. Um, and it didn't even become good in some way. There was one that was beef stew. Beef stew. And it literally had frozen chunks of potato. <laughs> um, yeah. It, and it somehow. And they consider them dessert bars. I mean, they're, they're a joke. They're not like, it's uh, not. That's it's not, not like Bluebell. It's not no, no, like, no, no, no. A, it's just, it was a joke. Like we freeze them. And if you eat them, you eat them. Yeah. It's just, it's a joke. It's a little thing that kids would like, just so that they could be like, ew. I mean, they, they felt the same way, but I just thought it was funny because I've never seen anything like that here, but. Um, no, I don't think people, something like that here would go over. No, I don't think people would. And, and honestly, they didn't sell well. So I think they were just like a seasonal thing that they did every once in a while. So, so weird though. Yeah. Were, yeah. Chunks, literal chunks of potato. 
Yeah. What is something for everybody that's listening or has not had a chance or an opportunity to go outside of the United States? What's something that Japan does or has that's very different from America that you could see working here? The days. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to go, you want to explain what that is? <laughs> uh, I mean, well, in general, they just J Japanese people know how to have how to have a good bathroom. Like their their tubs are really deep, and they they have a shower room. So you go into the room, you close it, and you know you can use the spray uh, for the shower all over the place. And you can get you can fill the tub to the top, and it can overflow and just drain. It's just Amazing. I love that idea. Yeah, it's so good. And they have bidets and they're like, they're just so common. They're in ev like every restroom you go to, there's a bidet. And I didn't realize how more, how much cleaner I feel when I use a bidet as opposed to just wiping with toilet paper. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah. interesting. Here's an interesting story. It may be TMI, but it does. It is very Julie's a mess and it'll take us back there real fast. So I'm dating a guy right now. And a couple of weeks ago, we were getting intimate, mm. not into men's, although lately I've really wanted a chocolate donut, too. But uh, we are getting intimate and um, <laughs> I'm laying on my back and he goes down to, um, you know, Yep. Yeah. And he goes, Julie, what's this white stuff? And I totally jumped up and I was freaking out. And I went and I reached back there and I went, oh, toilet paper. Oh, no. <laughs> so had we had a bidet, wouldn't have had that. No issues. Yeah. No issues. I was like, it's toilet paper. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Yeah. Oh. I mean, this means you were really trying to clean it up for him. I was. I was trying to be clean for him. <laughs> Little booger. So, uh, okay, so uh, I think we're on question like three, three or four. Um, when you think of me, we were talking about earlier how you had been watching my journey and kind of watching what I've been going through the last couple of years. Is there a song that comes to mind for me that, that you associate with me? And if so, can you sing a little bit of it? Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, there, as you may not know the song, I would be really surprised if you did, but there is a very famous um, Australian composer uh, or artist, musician, and his name is John Farnham. And he's like, he's like Australian's version of Steve Perry from Journey, right? He's okay. Got an incredible tenor voice. Uh, you could probably sing his music really well, actually. He's, and, he's done some stuff with Olivia Newton-John before, right? Possibly, yeah. I and Celine Dion, Celine Dion has worked with him, too. Um, but he has a song called You're the Voice. And it is a really, it's just a beautiful song to me. And, yeah, I think that's the first thing that popped in my head. You're the voice. Okay. Can we hear a little bit of it? You know, um, I'm going to go Google it later. Yeah, you should. You should. It's it's like a very empowering feel good song um so the course is like you're the voice try and understand it make a noise and make it clear oh we're not gonna sit in silence we're not gonna live with fear no Whoa. oh gosh that was beautiful thank you so much i love it it's I love it. And I wanted everybody to hear you and hear your chops. <laughs> you do sing really well. What One of the things I always remember about you is that you would always just kind of break out in songs sometimes. Even if you didn't think people are listening, you'd hum a little bit or you'd sing a little bit. or you Even if it was just like the chorus or the bridge and you'd go kind of on about your day. And It's in my veins. I can't really stop it. So... <laughs> No, I agree. And I love music and I love singing. And so... Um, Do you still sing a lot? I don't sing a lot. So one of my problems is, I wouldn't call it a problem. It's just, I've, I've been singing more. Like I went and did karaoke the other night uh, with the guy I'm dating. But um, <laughs> I... Um, 
everything has changed. And so I feel like when I sing sometimes, I still hear Bradford. I still hear that register and I don't hear a very feminine register. And I try to do everything so I can fly under the radar now because I don't want to be attacked or, you know, last year, last year was hard for me. I had a lot, I had really strong confidence going into last year. And then I was in a situation that just eradicated and kind of pulled that confidence right out of me. And so then I second guessed everything that I did and I felt you know, my singing, even though people say, oh my gosh, you have a beautiful register and a beautiful voice and please sing more. I just feel that, um, I feel that people can tell. And, and, and so for that reason, I get super, um, I don't know what the word is for it, but I become super self-conscious. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, if I sing that song, they're going to know I'm a man. Or if I sing that song, I'm going to sound too much like Josh Groban. And so like, it's just, I've got to get to a place where I can sing again to where I don't care. Right, you know, right. And, I, and so um, my PR team at Just Julie, they really want me to try and get into an intimate type situation here in Savannah where I open up like a cabaret and do a couple of numbers a night, you know, maybe find a piano guy and just do some, some jazz numbers and some, you know, American songbook standards. And I would love to do that. I think that would be a lot of fun, but it's just, I have to get to that place where I feel comfortable again. So right. at the moment, I just feel like that part of my voice or journey is taking a back seat to some of the advocacy stuff that I'm doing and just, it, I, you know, maybe I'll go back to it. Oh, I mean, cause I do like doing it and it would be a good way to make money. I just, I, I just am not there yet. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be scary if you were, especially if you're singing, and you're feeling like, you know, you're being judged for so many other reasons than you're normally feeling judged when you're singing. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, so, I mean, I think that would be fun to do and work on. I just think that I'm not, I think that may be something I work on a little bit later moving forward. And I think people, some people know I sing. I think the other thing too is because that was so much a part of who Bradford is. And that's not to say that Bradford's not a part of who I am because I am split and and he very much is. I just think that Julie needs to come out of the gate with something that's hers. Mm -hmm. And then if she can go back, I, I don't know, it's, We're, maybe I need a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> you, We all do, honey, we all do. I just, I like this past year is when I, I just started therapy, like, you know, at the beginning of this year and it is already really, really helped me. Yeah. They say it's a great, they say it's a great thing. They say it's, you know, I, you know, they say it's great. I advocate for people to go all the time. Yeah. Um, it's, it's changing my life, honestly. Like um, I used to have panic attacks and I just couldn't deal with it anymore. So that's the main reason I went. Well, I'm glad that you're getting the help and <laughs> maybe I'll find one here. It's easy to just date a therapist because then you don't have to go lay on their couch. You can just lay in bed and you can be like, but babe, and just, you know. No, but then, but then like, you're going to think that they're analyzing everything you do. That was, that's not a good idea. <laughs> okay. That's not a good idea. <laughs> no, honey. No. <laughs> but, yeah. But like, in fact, I would go with a lady that way you don't feel tempted, you know? <laughs> true. That's true. But, unless you like ladies too. I'm not sure. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, question number five. What's uh, okay? What's one of what's one of your favorite? Uh, what's one of your favorite things about Gilly? About Gilly? Oh my mm. god. You said you didn't want to puke, so I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, I'm different from my audience. My audience may be here for it. They may be like, yes. Uh, well, uh, well, you know, people always talk about, like, love at first sight. Now, don't get me wrong. Mike is adorable and extremely hot when he's when he's all dressed up and smelling nice. Um, but actually, for us, it was like love at first laugh because I 
we laugh all the damn time so much. And uh, that's honestly my favorite thing is that our humor works so well together. We get each other's humor pretty much to a T. And like when our families met the other person, they were like, oh, so you're just marrying yourself. As, you know, <laughs> that's yeah. what that and that's what like, yeah. So I think my favorite thing is his humor and his kindness because he's got the biggest heart. Yeah. It's so fun to watch the two of you. I will, uh, I crack up all the time when I stumble across your Instagram feed or your um, TikTok and y'all will start a song together and y'all are just doing it to be like, you know, y'all say this is just our corny attempt at whatever. Yeah. And then you'll do something looking directly at him and you'll start laughing and he'll start laughing. And then it's almost like you have to be like, okay, I gotta sing. <laughs> Yeah, it's adorable yeah. though, <laughs> guys. It's adorable for those that are listening. You have to go look for them on TikTok and Instagram because you will find your afternoon is robbed as you just go through <laughs> their feed, listening to songs. Then you'll find yourself. I think I suggested they learn Muskrat Love, and they were like, "Huh?" And I was like, "I don't really love that song, but I think it'd be cute to watch the two of you do it." Oh, I had to. I mean, actually, when you suggested it, and we we went and listened to it, I was like, "What the hell is this song? Yeah. What is happening?" And then somebody, we've had other people suggest it, and I'm like, I, "Unless you're okay with us laughing all the way through, I don't think we could do it anywhere near serious because it is so ridiculous." It's ridiculous. <laughs> It is so ridiculous. And they twirl and they whirl all around us. Doing the jing and the jangle must be muskrat love. I, you know, that was very popular when my parents got married and I used, and my dad used to date Tony Tennille in college. Really? When she was at Auburn. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's so cool. Yeah. So um, I'll ask sometimes, I'll be like, what the hell was that song about? And my mom and dad will like giggle and they'll be like, well, you know, and my dad's like, oh, you know, like it was the seventies and everything had to have a hook. And he's like, it did really well on the radio. And you're like, did what? And there's like little mice chittering and like, it's they're like, muskrats. Sorry, muskrats. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're making the, and it's that weird, like it was the part of the seventies and eighties where they started to use like the steel guitar. And so you'd hear like the twang of that. Ah, ah, you know, it's yeah. weird. Uh, People need to go listen to Muskrat Love and they'll be like, and supposedly it was a big hit at weddings in the 70s. That <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. People, people like, oh my gosh, we do a lot of weddings and there's all, almost everybody's asking for the same songs too. I'm just like, don't you want to do something a little different? So yeah. Wouldn't you like to hear something new and exciting? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. If I ever get married, I'm hiring the two of you for my wedding. Okay, we'll do yeah. it. We and I'll be like, it. sing whatever you fucking want to sing. Muskrat Just keep love. the people moving. No <laughs> muskrat love. <laughs> we do it for your wedding. I would, I'd kill you. Okay. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. Think of something else. Um. Gosh, what's a uh, what's a song that you because y'all sing all the time when we were just talking about it? What's a song you haven't done yet that you would like to try with him? Um, that is a good question. Um, I, so, hmm, I'm a big fan of um, you know, Sarah Bareilles. Mm -hmm. I love her, um, and I want to do more of her stuff. But my so Mike plays by ear, like he doesn't read music. Everything he learns, it's just he's he hears it and he's like, okay, yeah, I know what they're doing, and then he does it. I don't know, it's just an insane skill he's got. But some stuff he just doesn't it doesn't register with him. If if Mike doesn't like the song, basically we're not gonna do it. That's yeah, because he's got to learn it. He's got to learn it. That means he's got to listen to it. Oh, there's another one. Uh, I I really I like Lady Gaga. I think she's great and really fun to listen to. And he cannot stand her. Can at all? No. And you know why? I think it's just because of her name. Like he has no issue with her. You know, 
but he hates her name so much. Like if her name was Laura Gabriella, he'd be like, oh, let's try some of that music. It's because it's I, Lady Gaga. And maybe I should try using like her her real name, which is, I can't yeah. Remember. You know what her real name is? I'll try it next time. Um, Alexa, what's Lady Gaga's real name? Stephanie Germanata. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Stephanie. There's a lot of other stuff in the middle, but I couldn't repeat all that. Stephanie it's like Steph, Stefanano Germanano. Well, she's Stephanie. Italian. She's got a bunch of names, I'm sure. Mm. There's a probably, there, speaking of her, there's a movie coming out about the, what is it, the um, the Gucci family? Or something? Have you seen the, the previews for this? No, but I always wanted to be in the mob. That the, and she is in it, and it just looks really good. Oh, I'm gonna have to go see it. I always and thought Robert. I, I, you know, they used to say there was a gay mafia, and I thought I want in it. <laughs> I want in it, and now yeah. I'm like, even a, even though I identify as a straight woman, now I'm like. I still want in the mob. If a mobster came up and was like, I'm in the mob, but I'm going to take care of you for the rest of your life. I'd be like, let's go. Yeah. Real housewife mm -hmm. of New Jersey right here. Bravo. Like, Bravo let's wife. do it. Let's do it. Gosh, mm -hmm. I'd be such a great mob wife. Some nice clothes and mm -hmm. jewelry. Flipping yeah. tables like Teresa Giudici. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that would be so much fun. Okay. So my last question for you, because you were originally supposed to be in our Disney series in July, and we've already talked about you doing Belle at the parks, and I know you did some other um, characters as well. What was one of your just funniest, most memorable moments at Disney? Actually, can I give you one at Universal? Yes. Yes, okay. you can. Because Universal was, this one really sticks out. So when I was doing Elphaba, the 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 stage is is outside in like an amphitheater type thing, a covered amphitheater. So we dealt with all the elements, and sometimes birds would fly in on land on the stage and stuff. <laughs> and uh, I mean, not to say it was a really cool set, um, very cool set. But so there's a part you know at the very end that so the end of our show ended with Defying Gravity. Uh, so she would go up, you know, just like she does in the show on a elevator type thing. And it was a really cool effect. Um, and when I was up there, I had the broom and I'm like, you know, doing the thing and uh, all of you and all of us, all that part. There was a roach at the end of the broom. <laughs> and I'm like shaking it like this, thinking if this thing flies and hits me in the head or just it's I'm the show's going to go down and it's going to be the worst thing that's ever happened. So I'm, I'm like really shaking it as I'm saying that part, you know, um, the little spoken part and defying gravity and whoo. And when I came down, I had tears in my eyes from laughing so hard <laughs> because I knew it had to look ridiculous. And it's so unfortunate. There was no video. of it. Oh my gosh. Did the roach get off the room? I don't know what happened to the roach. Yeah. I, I think it, it, the thing is, is we had, a, there was a bunch of actors down below me too. So I was worried that it was going to fall on them, but that's their own problem at that point. So, um, yeah. That road. Now look, when I was a kid and growing up, I used to think that every person had an animal counterpart. Like you would have a mouse named Charity Gill that was like, when you were driving down the road with your parents, the mouse would be in a little car, like the littles driving down like that road following, like I, that's I'm cool. crazy. But so in essence, there could be a roach that also was in a show in Japan, Wicked based and was also Alphaba. Oh wow. Named Charity. I mean, that could have been your roach and you were like, get off the stage, my show. <laughs> If my animal is a roach, I, I'm just going to jump off a cliff. What? <laughs> oh, man. Charity, I, yeah, yes. it has been great talking to you. And we are now um, moving along. What is going on in your life that you want to promote? We talked a little bit the, about the cruise ship, so you could tell our followers about that. But we, uh, anything going on that you want to promote or talk about right now? 
Sure. Um, I mean, yeah, we have a, a group cruise coming up. It's not well, coming up March 2023. It's not a cheap cruise, which is why we chose to put it way in the future. That way people could save up. Um, but it's just we're going to the ABC Islands, which we spent a lot of time there. It's Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao and Grand Cayman. And it's a nine day cruise. It's a long one. We've never tried anything like this. We're like a group cruise where it's just our fans hanging out on a ship together. So we're very curious to see how it goes. Apparently 16 cabins have been booked already, um, which is awesome. Um, but if you're interested in checking that out, uh, I would say go to our website, which is just gillyandthegirl.com or our Facebook site. Um, you can just look up Gilly and the Girl. And, uh, but maybe you want to hear what we sound like. And if you're in the Orlando area, Central Florida area, we play here mostly five days a week. Some public gigs, some private gigs, and uh, I don't know. We do weddings, we do corporate events. We're you have albums. You have an album or two out, right? We just have one. It's a cover album that we just put together so we could sell music on when we were on the cruise ship. But we're we're trying to work on a second one now, and it's going to be called "Under the Covers" with Gilly and the Girl. So like, <laughs> play on words there, uh, and it's all love songs. Oh, maybe we'll hear Muskrat Love on there. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's secret. So it'll be this, the secret song at the end. Uh, that'll be that. You only get this if you buy the whole album track. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, yeah, there's you can find us on, like you said, all the things. And TikTok is definitely where we have the most followers. And we're still like, what is what is happening? I know. How many followers do you all have on TikTok now? 260, I think, at this point. 260,000? Yeah. God, you're way past me. Oh. <laughs> I need to get a boyfriend and start singing on TikTok. I only have 143,000. That is nothing to shake a stick at, as they say in Georgia. No, <laughs> no. And if I'm going to shake a stick, it needs to have a roach on the end of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need the stick to hit the roach with. Mine is only advocacy. You're singing. Maybe if I start singing again. Maybe I can. I would love to hear you sing on there. That would be awesome. Like, why, why can't you do like some Tony Braxton or, some, or like Karen Carpenter? Like they had low registers. And I did. I like doing Karen Carpenter's. I really like doing the Carpenter songs. I actually think one of the, um, speaking of music and how much I love it, I think one of the most horrific things in the music industry is that Richard Carpenter has not let anybody record that music mm. while he's been alive. Really? And I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's why you never hear a lot of Carpenter cover songs being done because he won't let anybody share the right or any of it. And it's and yes, it allows their music to live on and, and people still listen to Karen Carpenter. Um, but I would love to hear some of the different rewrites and things that would come out of that catalog. And he's yeah. not let anybody touch it. That's so and strange. until he dies. I don't think anybody's going to be tough. And I don't even know how old he is. And I'm not wishing death on Richard Carpenter. I'm just saying no. there are so many great songs in that catalog that would just be, I would love to see redone or, or hear differently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like Tony Braxton. The only song I remember from her is Unbreak my heart Say you love me again Yeah. We're going to cause echoes on this podcast, though. We're going to be like, who is that? That was really. Um, I don't know. I like singing and I sing. But, you know, it's just, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I, I miss it sometimes. I just, it'll be interesting to see how it makes it way back into my life. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, maybe we can collaborate on something. I don't know. You never know. You never know. So we want to get up to Savannah. Like we haven't been to, together to Savannah. So maybe you'll be there when we go. I'm sure I probably will. You know, so yeah, come see me. Come see me. You know, it's just a quick train ride from Orlando. Just just a train ride? Can you yeah, you can get on the Amtrak and be here in like th two hours. I didn't know that. That's yeah, cheap. it's cheap. Really? Cheap. I'll have to look into that. I had no idea. Yeah. Y'all could train. get on a romantic train. Y'all could maybe do a, a quick video outside of the train and and Photoshop steam in so it looks very like 1940s and then get on the train and come see me. 
That would be awesome, actually. I love train rides. I'd love it. We could have coffee. I could give Mike a hug. He looks very strong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> okay, we've come to the part of the show where we're wrapping things up. And it's been a great time with our guest, Charity Gill. Charity, this is the part of the show where my guests get to ask me a question about what it's like to have been living my intersex life or in this body or in this form. Sometimes people ask questions that they've always wanted to ask and they weren't sure how to approach me. Sometimes they ask questions that are just general that they want to know. Um, but this is where I allow you to have the floor. And then in my response to you, I get to answer a great question for a great friend. And it also helps educate anybody that's watching this podcast or listening from home that doesn't know anything about the intersex community or being intersex. So the floor is yours. Okay. Um, I think I would want to know, like, what is just because I, we get so frustrated with some of the questions that we get asked and it's on such a smaller scale than what you have to deal with, I'm sure. But like, what, what is the most frustrating thing, like question that you get asked over and over and over that you just wish people could get in their heads, I guess, about your situation? Um, I, I, well, and it's frustrating more because I think the literature that's been out there for the last 16, 17, 18 gazillion years uh, leads people to just assume this. But very often when you say intersex, I dealt with it this morning on a Facebook thread, people think trans mm. or hermaphrodite. Mm. And so I'll often get asked, are you trans? When did you transition? And what's your dead name? And everything that has to do with being a trans individual. Intersex is not N-O-T, capital N-O-T. That is not trans. Being intersex is not trans. To be intersex, you have to have a genetic or chromosomal variant that lies between the XX and XY genders on a spectrum. And even XXY, which is what I am, we could have so many different differences, even just being XXY, right? It's a spectrum. And so I, I think that's frustrating because I'm always having to say, I'm not trans. No, I'm not trans. No, this is not trans. This, you know, and somebody this morning on Facebook said, nobody wants to know about your sexual preferences or your choices. And I said, that's not what this is. Wow. Intersex is literally being born with characteristics and traits of both genders, sometimes organs of both genders, in a hodgepodge or an array of configurations that would just blow most people's minds way open, right? And so in my situation, I was born with an ovary and a testicle, both underdeveloped, located where my ovaries would have been. I was born with a partial uterus. I was born with a partial cervix internally. Externally, just boy parts on the outside, but then at 17 started to grow breast tissue. So it literally is a hodgepodge sometimes of things going on in your body. And it's not trans, I didn't choose it. But I, like I talked about earlier, I'm living my best life with what was given to me. You know, my dad often says, you were not given a great hand. You were not given a great hand in this life of cards. My dad says this to me all the time and he goes, but you play that hand like a pro and you play it better than anybody has played it. And he was like, and for that, you know, he goes, I just sit in awe that you play your cards so well. Mm. Um, but it's not trans. I think that's the one thing that is, super frustrating. And, and, it, and it really comes down to just people educating themselves. The information's out there. It just, it, you know, what is a choice? I say all the time, this isn't a choice, but ignorance absolutely is a choice because yeah. there's literature out there and there are people like myself out there advocating for my community. And all you have to do is take a few minutes to listen or read, and it really will shift your opinion. Mm. And then you're not ignorant because then you're knowledgeable about the topic. 
you were you gonna say something else? I saw you go, and uh, <laughs> you're gonna say uh, something. No, yeah, no. I mean, this this is definitely educational for me because uh, I'm I'm guessing like when when you are trans, you're making the decision to change, right? Is that am I ignorant in thinking that? No. So the transgender community, you're trans people, and there's and I have to preface this: there's nothing wrong with it, but it's where trans people feel they are in the wrong body. They feel right. they are born into the wrong body. Right. And they spend their life changing that or trying to get into the right form for them, right? right. Intersex literally is being born a configuration of both, if you will, a hybrid of both. You have characteristic, sexual characteristics, traits of both. And that can be XXY, that can be Turner syndrome, which is XXO, that can be XXX. Uh, intersex is an umbrella term. Down syndrome, even though that has to do with a missing gene, falls under the intersex umbrella. They consider yeah. it an intersex because it's a variation between the XX and the XY. So um, there are 42 recognized variants out wow. there. 42. Wow. They're not being studied, you know, and a lot of them are not being researched or studied because especially here in the United States, things that are studied is where the money is, you know, cancers and diabetes and stuff like that. But they're, I mean, but they're noted, they're noted and they've been diagnosed as being on that spectrum. And, and so, I know, so most, and most, um, I know you've had a lot of health issues because of it, right? So is that mm -hmm. pretty common? Is that, or is that across the board always something that happens? Uh, for XXYs, a lot of XXYs are at a higher, um, higher, what is it, propensity of having osteo issues. So osteoporosis issues, bone density issues. Um, XXY men tend to be taller statute or taller, uh, often have something around their midsection or abdomen uh, like fat that they can't get rid of. They call it the uh, Kleinfelters or uh, XXY belly, mm -hmm. um, low testosterone. The, the thing is, is for many years, they said XXYs were only males. And then in 2018, there was a discovery that you can absolutely be born fully female and still suffer XXY that there are females that are XXY. I know about 15 women globally that have had to transition later in life to live a better quality of life. Uh, you know, my situation was I went to the National Institute of Health at 43 and took part in a study for the future of XXYs. And at that study, they kind of gave me a blueprint for the rest of my life. And they said, you know, you now have osteoporosis of the lower back and spine. You now have lupus. There are not, there's not a cure for that. Um, the only thing that'll make it slow down for you is a crap ton of estrogen. And mm -hmm. I said to him at that point in time, I said, but that's going to cause me to fully transition. And they mm -hmm. said, well, yeah, but so what are your decided, options? You hadn't decided that you wanted to do that at all like that. Or was that, were you thinking that you could do that, that you wanted to transition? I, you know, when it was first brought to me, I didn't because I had I had a career in LA as Bradford and I had a career in Hollywood as Bradford and I was starting to make a name for myself and I had siblings and they had nieces and nephews that all knew me as Uncle Brad. And, um, you know, 43 years of my life had been spent as Bradford. Sure. And here they were telling me if I wanted to have a better quality of life and they and I wanted some of those medical issues to subside that I would have to transition. That was hard. Yeah, and I remember I went home that night and I called my parents and I've talked about this a lot before in these podcasts, but I called my parents and I said, what am I supposed to? I said, I, I what am I supposed to do? Like I was literally at a loss. And my dad, who is salt of the earth, you know, when you've talked about your dad before, I think of my dad sometimes too. And my dad, um, salt of the earth, he's that guy that 
really takes in all the information and mulls over it and thinks about it and may come back two weeks later and be like, here's my answer, right? But then that night, you know, this was like, I need to know what am I supposed to do? And my dad said, well, if you take the estrogen and you change, how long, what's your life expectancy? Because they've said for years that XXY and intersex people have a shortened lifespan anyway. And that's starting to be proved differently too. But when I asked the medical team, they said, well, medical miracles happen all the time, but we're not in the business of predicting how long your life could be. Mm. Maybe 15 to 16 years, maybe. Versus going home and not doing anything, going back to Orlando and not doing anything and being dead by 48. Wow. And I was 43. So my dad said that night on the phone, he said, Bradford, I would rather lose you in 15 to 16 years as my daughter than to lose you in five as my son. And you're going to go in tomorrow and tell them to give me the estrogen. And... I haven't looked back, you know, and he is my fiercest champion. You know, he'll say everybody else is. He'll be like, oh, your mother really cares about you. And she's such a, and maybe she is, but he is absolutely my fiercest champion. And, and you're Julie to him. I'm Julie to him. So the interesting thing was I, people always say, oh my gosh, I love your name. It's so interesting. How'd you get it? And, uh, I knew that the transition would be just as hard on my parents as it was on everybody else that was going through it. You know, I came back and wrote a huge letter on Facebook saying, this is what I'm about to do. This is what I'm going through. If you can stand by and support me, then stay on my page. And if you can't, peace out, you know, but this is what I need to do. And so I went back to my parents and I said, this has got to be absolutely just as crazy for you as it is for me. And mm -hmm. my genetic counselor is saying, I need to pick a name and stick with it sooner the better. And had I been born fully female at birth, you would have given me a name and that would be my name today. So would you like to have a part in my name now? Hmm. And people are like, what? You gave your parents naming rights at 43? And I was like, well, yeah, I thought it would help them deal with it. You know better. I wasn't giving them full naming rights. Like I wasn't going to be Gracie Lou Freebush, but like <laughs> I, I was like, come on now. So my parents took time and they came back about two weeks later. And my dad said, Look, had you been born fully female at birth, we were going to call you Courtney Lee. Courtney L E I G H Lee. The Lee honors your Irish and Scottish history. And obviously you can't be Courtney Lee because you have a younger sister named Courtney. Mm. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not really a Courtney anyway. That doesn't fit me. I don't think I'm a Courtney. Mm. So um, for a while I was going with Amanda Lee because my drug name had been Amanda Sumners. And I knew I wanted to keep Amanda somewhere in my name just because a lot of people knew me that way. And my fan base knew me that way. Yeah. But Amanda Lee to me sounded like I needed to be in Ocala with a Pabst Blue Ribbon beer in my hand and a Chevrolet up on cinder blocks. So I was like, mm, I don't think I'm going to go with Amanda Lee. And so then, and, and that was about four or five months of trying to test that out. And then um, I was laying in bed in California and I'm visiting a friend and um, I needed to you know, I'd already started paperwork to change my, my name and my driver's license. And so I was laying there and I was like, Lord, you know, I really like the way Julie Amanda sounds, but how is that supposed to work? You know, and then I heard my spirit say, easy, be Julie, J-U-L-E-I-G-H. You're honoring the Lee that your parents want you to keep. And you can still be Amanda. You can be Julie Amanda. And then your last name in Mayfield, that was important. My dad had said at the time, he was like, your last name's not on the table. And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, that's your birthright. So you'll always be a Mayfield. And he goes, I would be really upset if you changed that. And I said, well, I would only change it if it was going to cause you and mom and everybody else 
issues, you know, and he said, nope, that's your last name. That's your name. He goes, Bill Mayfield, until you get married. And even then, you may be a man. You may be a man. <laughs> so, um, so that's how, you know, Julie Amanda Mayfield. And then, then for a while it was Julie A. Mayfield. And now, you know, it's pretty much just Julie Mayfield. But I'll call and he gets super excited. And my mom will be like, Julie's on the phone. And you can just hear him light up. And he runs to the phone to talk to me, which I wouldn't have in any other way. So that's awesome. That's so good. I love that. Yeah. So, well, Charity, it is eight o'clock and I told you it would be about an hour and uh, I've enjoyed getting to recatch up with you and everything that's going on for everybody that's listening at home or watching us live. Make sure you check her out on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. Her name is Charity Gill. Uh, you can see the charity right here, last name Gill, but also part of Gilly and the Girl, which is her amazingly talented husband and herself crooning songs throughout and around the world on cruise ships and in Orlando <laughs> and anywhere that you're willing to listen. Uh, charity is going to stay with me just a little bit after we cut off so we can say goodbye in the green room. But I'm going to go ahead and play us out with our own music which is the outro to Rosé All Day. Please join me next week, November 2nd. I will have a non-binary guest joining me that I just met this week, and I'm excited to have them on and talk about all things non-binary. And uh, we are all a part of this great big world. There is love for everybody. I thank you for your support and your love. Please subscribe and join us for more info on justjulie.com. Have a wonderful evening. Thank For more content, follow JustJulie.com. That's just Julie, J-U-L-E-I-G-H.com. Thank you to our guests, and thank you for joining us this evening. Join us next week as Julie tries a different rosé.